Inostransevia is an extinct genus of large carnivorous therapsids, which lived in the late Permian in what is now European Russia and South Africa. The first known fossils of this Gorgonopsian were discovered in northern Dvina, Russia, where two almost complete skeletons were exhumed. Three species of them were originally recognized, Inostransevia alexandrae, Inostransevia latifrons, and Inostransevia urolensis. The new fossil discovery in South Africa suggests that Inostransevia migrated 7,000 miles across Pangaea, filling a gap in a faraway ecosystem that had lost its top predators before going extinct itself. Inostransevia is the biggest known Gorgonopsian, with the most massive fossil specimens suggesting a size estimated between 3 meters, 9.8 feet, and 3.5 meters, 11 feet in length. Inostransevia is characterized by its robust skeleton, broad skull, and a highly advanced dentition, featuring large canines. The longest of these canines measures up to 15 centimeters, or 5.9 inches, and was likely used to shear the skin off its prey. Similar to other Gorgonopsians, Inostransevia possessed a notable large jaw-opening angle, enabling it to deliver fatal bites. As mentioned, the Inostransevia was likely a fully terrestrial predator that moved with an erect gait. Its limbs were likely positioned almost vertically instead of horizontally. However, this therapsid probably could not have moved its limbs too far forward. It is widely believed that Gorgonopsians were nocturnal creatures, and their vision was adapted to low light conditions. Only Clelandina has been confirmed to be strictly diurnal. This behavioral trait was not studied in Inostransevia, but we cannot rule out the possibility that it preferred to hunt during the night. Gorgonopsians generally had quite a strong bite force, except for those with a less robust skull and longer canines, like Inostransivia and Smilosaurus. The members of these genera had a much weaker bite, so they relied on their canines to slash prey. The bite force of Rubigia, a Gorgonopsian comparable in size to Inostransivia, has been estimated at 715 newtons. The reproductive behavior and life cycle of Inostransivia and other therapsids are poorly studied. Some sources list that Inostransivia reproduced by laying eggs, but no evidence supports this theory. Other scientists tried to guess some reproductive aspects of therapsids by comparing them with mammals. For example, they have suggested that therapsids may have had anal and urogenital openings, mammal-like facial musculature specialized for suckling and mammary glands. As such, they argued in favor of viviparity. However, as mentioned, none of these things can be confirmed for Inostransivia. Additionally, even if Inostransivia were viviparous, it remains unknown how long the gestation period was, how developed the babies were when they were born, and how much parental care the adults engaged in. Besides this, the ontogeny of the genus is also poorly studied, which is why the growth stages of baby and juvenile Inostransivia remain in the shadows. Gorgonopsians markedly increased in size as time went on, growing from small skull lengths of 10 to 15 centimeters, 4 to 6 inches in the middle Permian, to bear-like proportions of up to 60 centimeters or 2 feet in the upper Permian. The latest Gorgonopsians, Rubiginae, were the most robust of the group and could produce especially powerful bites. They are thought to have been completely terrestrial and could walk with a semi-erect gait, with a similar terrestrial locomotory range as modern crocodilians. They may have been more agile than their prey items, but were probably inertial homeotherms rather than endotherms unlike contemporary therocephalians and cynodonts, and thus were probably comparatively less active. Though Gorgonopsians were able to maintain a rather high body temperature, 
it is unclear if they would have also had sweat glands or fur. Their brains were reminiscent of modern reptilian brains, rather than those of living mammals. Most species may have been predominantly diurnal, active during the day, though some could have been crepuscular, active at dawn or dusk, or nocturnal, active at night. Gorgonopsians are believed to have possessed binocular vision, a parietal eye, a heightened sense of smell, a functional vomeronasal organ, and possibly a rudimentary eardrum. The major therapsida groups had all evolved by 275 million years ago from a paleogosaur ancestor. The therapsid takeover from paleogosaurs took place by the Middle Permian as the world progressively became drier. Gorgonopsians rose to become apex predators of their environments following the Capanation mass extinction event, which killed off the Dinocephalians and some large Therocephalians after the Middle Permian. Despite the existence of a single continent during the Permian, Pangaea, Gorgonopsians have only been found in Karu Supergroup, primarily in South Africa, but also in Tanzania, Zambia, and Malawi. The Moradi Formation in Niger, Western Russia, and in the Turpan Basin of Xinjiang, China, with probable remains known from the Kundaram Formation in the Pranita Godavari Basin of India. These places were semi-arid areas with highly seasonal rainfall. Like many mammals, Gorgonopsians were heterodonts with clearly defined incisors, canines, and post-canine teeth, homologous with premolars and molars. They had five incisors in the upper jaw. For most, the first three were the same size as each other, and the last two were shorter, and four at the bottom. In the majority of Gorgonopsians, the incisors were large, and the upper canines were elongated into sabers, much like those of later saber-toothed cats. Some Gorgonopsians had exceptionally long upper canines, such as Inostrancevia, and some of them had a flange on the lower jaw to sheathe the tip of the canine while the mouth was closed. Sabers are generally interpreted as having been used as stabbing or slashing weapons, which would have required an extremely wide gape. Both the upper and lower canines of Rubigia were elongated, and the animal would have needed an even greater gape. The serration pattern of Gorgonopsians was most similar to those of theropod dinosaurs than to other synapsids. The palate also features tuberosities and ridges, which oftentimes have functional teeth, which may have been used to hold onto struggling prey, diverting these powerful forces away from the fragile canines. Gorgonopsians were polyphyodonts, and teeth grew continuously throughout an individual's life. Like some therapsids, while there was one functional canine, another canine was growing to replace it when it inevitably broke off. The left and right sides of the jaws did not have to be synchronous. So, for example, the first canine on the left side could be functional, while the first canine on the right side was still growing. Such a method might have been in play so as always to have a set of functional canines, as having a single or no canines would have severely impeded hunting, and growing such large teeth took a long time. On the other hand, because the functional canine is typically found in the foremost tooth socket, it is possible that canine replacement occurred a finite number of times, and the animal would eventually be left with a single, permanent set of functional canines in these sockets. In 1984, British paleontologists Doris and Kenneth Kermack suggested that the canines grew to match the size of the skull, and continually broke off until the animal stopped growing and that Gorgonopsians featured an early version of finite tooth replacement exhibited in many mammals. Gorgonopsians were likely active predators. The Rubigians have an especially robust skull among Gorgonopsians, comparable to those of enormous macro predators, which use their skulls as their primary weapon, such as mosasaurs or some theropod dinosaurs. Less robust Gorgonopsians with longer canines and much weaker bite, 
such as Smilosaurus or Inostrancivia, instead probably used their canines for slashing, much more similar to saber-toothed cats. Gorgonopsian taxa did coexist with each other, as many as seven at one time, and the fact that some Rubigians possess post-canines, while some other contemporary ones do not suggest that they practiced niche partitioning and pursued different prey items. The Gorgonopsian jaw hinge was double-jointed and made up of somewhat mobile and rotatable bones, which would have allowed them to open their mouths incredibly wide, perhaps in excess of 90 degrees, without having to unhinge the jaw. In 2002, biologists Blair van Valkenberg and Tyson Seco alternatively suggested that sabers evolved primarily due to sexual selection as a form of mating display. This is exhibited in some modern deer species, but is difficult to test given the lack of living saber-toothed synapsid predators. Gorgonopsians possibly used a bite-and-retreat tactic. The predator would ambush its quarry and take a sizable and debilitating bite out of it, and then follow as the prey tried to escape before succumbing to its injury, whereupon the Gorgonopsian would deliver a killing bite. Because the post-canines are reduced or entirely absent, meat would have been forcibly torn away from the carcass and swallowed whole. This puncture-pull strategy is also hypothesized to have been used by theropod dinosaurs. Gorgonopsians, along with other early carnivores as well as crocodiles, predominantly relied on kinetic inertial system KI, of biting down into prey, in which the pterygoid and temporalis muscles rapidly clamped the jaws shut, using momentum and the kinetic energy of the jaws and teeth to grapple the victim. Cynosaurus, a smaller Gorgonopsian, possessed slender skulls and sabers, suggesting behavior akin to that of jackals and foxes. Bigger Gorgonopsians, such as Gorgonops, had long, robust snouts with strongly flared cheeks, which would have supported strong pterygoids and a powerful KI bite. The medium-sized Arctonathus had a bull-like skull and resultantly powerful snout, which would have allowed strong bending and torsion movements, and a combination of both KI and SP bite elements, static pressure system. Even bigger Gorgonopsians, such as the Arctops, had a stronger and more convex snout, like the earlier Sphenicodont Dimetrodon, and would have been able to rapidly clamp the jaws shut from a wide gape. The even larger Rubigine had extremely powerful, heavily built buttressed skulls with wide snouts, strongly flanged cheeks, and exceedingly long teeth. One of the best studied Gorgonopsians is Lycanops, a meter-long animal whose name means wolf face. Like a wolf's, the skull of Lycanops was long, low, and slender. It possessed mammalian leg movements, which would have allowed it to outrun and chase down its prey, and it possessed dog-like fangs in both its upper and lower jaws, which would have been ideal for stabbing and tearing at prey's flesh. It is thought that Lycanops likely hunted small land vertebrates such as dicanodonts and reptiles. It's possible that Cynosaurus survived the mass extinction due to its small size, abundance, and flexible diet. The fox-sized carnivore, which sported a snout that was narrow, elongated, and packed with teeth, was one of the smallest known Gorgonopsians on record. Small, generalist predators typically adapt better to changing ecosystems than large, specialist predators do and are therefore more likely to weather catastrophic events. Gorgonopsians, including Inostrancivia, disappeared during the late Lopingian and Permian-Triassic extinction event, mainly due to volcanic activities that originated in the Siberian traps. The resulting eruption caused a significant climatic disruption unfavorable to their survival, leading to their extinction. Their ecological niches gave way to modern terrestrial ecosystems, including sauropsids, mostly archosaurs, and among the few therapsids surviving the event, mammals. However, some Russian Gorgonopsians have already disappeared a little time before the event, 
having consequently abandoned some of their niches to large therosophilians. After the extinction of the Rubigenes, Inostrancivia migrated from Russia to Africa to take the role of the apex predator within this place, at least for a limited time. <laughs>